I think this is a very, 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 very good bottle of wine for 1999. My name is Matthew Horky. For the last six years, I've been traveling around the world tasting thousands of wines per year in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. But today, I'm going to take you wine shopping with me. So often on the channel, I talk about the $30 to $50 sweet spot. That's where you can get some truly great wines. But today, I'm going to push it a little bit. I'm going to try to find great wines under 25 bucks. When I talk about great wines, I'm not talking about serviceable, nice wines. I'm going to talk about wines that I think really move me emotionally, something that's really great. Under 25 bucks is a super tall task, but I'm going to try to knock it out of the park. But first, we got to go shopping. Let's go. So I'm going to a few places. First, a small mom and pop type specialty wine shop. They're really personable here. I haven't been here actually in maybe four or five years, but I'm gonna look for, I think, European wines because they usually offer more bang for the buck. Any tips or anything that you kind of recommend when you're looking at under 25? Getting a lot out of Portugal these days, that's for sure. Coming from another professional, I always rave about Portugal. Lugana. So uh, Lugana is what's Trebbiano, if I remember the grapes. Lots of good stuff here, but I think I got what I need. Going from a small shop to a big one, Total Wine and More. They're all over the U.S., so you should be able to track one down. They have really nice and wide selection. Oh, that could be a good choice at Nabianco. So places like Chianti Classico, the Rhone, they, they offer really good value for money, but I think this is one region that is tipped out. This is a chance that we might get great wine under 25. And that region is Beaujolais in the south of France. I'm hoping that this bottle delivers. So I'm back from my little wine shopping. I have one more wine, and you know what? It's a wine that I already got in a package. I have not tasted it before. It comes in under 20 bucks. Let's get ready for the tasting tonight. I know I said originally it was gonna be under $25. I found all these wines under 20. So that's good news. I have no doubt that all these wines are pretty good, but I'm looking to see if I can find greatness. Wines that really, really move me, really speak to me. Let's get it. The first one I found here, this is the T-Mint. This is the Sauvignon Blanc Calc and Crede from Schuch Steiermark, which is South Styria 2020. 92 points, James Suckling. I did not buy these wines on scores. I bought them on recommendation. Hunch what I thought would be good. T-Mint is a winery in Austria. It's one of the premier Sauvignon Blanc producers in Europe. A lot of people in America don't know about it, but in Europe it's quite famous. I've always been impressed with their wines. However, I must have to say, I've only had their top wines before. They use a glass closure, nice and easy to take off. Drinking out of my Gabriel glasses. These are my favorite wine glasses in the world. I'll put a link in the description box below. South Styria is this real small region, quite hilly. I've been there a couple of times before. Really steep hills, kind of remind me of Piedmont, right on the border of South Austria in Northern Slovenia. The wine's a little bit reductive now. What I mean, it's a little bit closed off at the moment. Really gotta shake this out. I'm gonna give some of these wines a little bit of time, a little bit of benefit of the doubt here. Because I said, I wanna see if we can find really good value. Don't think when you think of these Sauvignon Blancs as big, fruity, explosive like you're going to see on New Zealand, you're going to see some mineral notes. For me, what comes out of this is melon, kiwi fruits, a little bit of white pear, Asian pear type flavors, just a touch of grass, no cat pee like sometimes you get in Sauvignon Blancs. Like I said, 92 points, James Suckling, we've talked about him on the channel before. I usually take a couple of points off <laughs> from his scores. He scores a little bit high for me, but you know what? To each his own. Let's see. This is for wine geeks. It's not super explosive on the palate, more mineral driven, but there's a beautiful spine of acidity and a long finish. I think this is a very, 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 very good bottle of wine for 1999. 
but I said I've got high standards here is I'm looking for greatness winds up move me I wouldn't call it great but I would call it very 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 darn good the mineral finish I'm still tasting it uh, it's got acidity but not too much it's not too sour for people very good wine in 1999 I'd recommend it this is what I got at total wine and more from Beaujolais this is the Jean-Claude de Bon Belle Grive Morgon 2018 93 points James Suckley. Morgon is one of the crews, one of the 10 crews in Beaujolais. Beaujolais reds are made entirely of Gamay. Have you ever had a Beaujolais white before made out of Chardonnay? A lot of people, when they think Beaujolais, they think Beaujolais Nouveau, that cheap, fresh, kind of thin stuff that's not super exciting. I don't really like those wines. Beaujolais has the reputation of you drink it young, it doesn't age well. But the Cruz, especially Morgon, has wines that can age really nicely. For those that like Pinot Noir, like Burgundy, a lot of people are flocking to Beaujolais because the quality. Gamay's is a fantastic grape. I think it can make wines that, that really taste like Pinot Noir and smell like Pinot Noir. I've got high expectations here. It has a little bit of age. Let's see. This is a little bit denser. Beaujolais, I think of more strawberry, raspberry, earth type flavors. This is more like dark cherry type flavor. So it's quite dense for a Beaujolais. Yeah, it's not super complex on the nose. I'm just thinking black cherry type flavors. A little bit of earth, a little bit of pepper. But, you know, I was expecting a little more complexity. Let's, let's see here. Mouthfeel on this is very good. Very nice, luscious, easy to drink. There's just a little bit of a tannic tug. However, I find the wine... Quite simplistic, quite just kind of fruity with more going. I want some earthiness. I want some complexity there. I still think it's very good. $16.99 if you want to experience Cru Beaujolais. I think this is worth it. Uh, is it great wine? No, it's not. I think the T-Mint was getting closer to really moving wine at that price point. I don't know. Let's give it a, let's give it a few minutes. That's also the thing with wines. You got to give them time in the glass to develop. You got to play with them. You know, I'm not even doing justice. You'd probably be doing justice to really drink through this bottle and see how it changes with time. That's the problem sometimes when you're judging a lot of wines or you're tasting a lot of wines like I do. You give snap judgments. But isn't that what we always do in life? Micro slicing. Isn't that what Malcolm Gladwell said? It's nice. But you know what? I was really wanting more. So, it's a good wine, but like I said, we're reaching for greatness. It's not great. It's very nice, though. Okay, the last wine here. We have from Rioja, the Rimeras de la Piscina, Reserva, 2016. Rioja, an old-school region, offers ridiculous value for money in northern Spain. I love Rioja, and I love that it's not trendy right now because you can get absurd quality value for money there. During Phylloxera in Europe, a lot of the people from Bordeaux were coming over to Rioja planting vines and then bottling it as Bordeaux. It has this nice metal cage here. In the past, they used the metal cage so people couldn't steal bottles and forge wine. But nowadays, it's just for decoration. You have three different levels in Rioja, although now they're introducing a single vineyard. You have Crianza, which means young, Reserva, which is aged in wood a little bit longer, and then Grand Reserva, which is aged even longer. I typically go for Reservas or Grand Reservas. I think they offer tremendous value for money. This is 100% Tempranillo. I know Rioja fairly well. I want to do more work there. I want to go there more. I bought this from the Village Corner guy that you saw earlier, Dick, who's been a wine merchant for a long time, really has some great stories, said that this was more of a traditional Rioja. It wasn't a big fruit bomb. Some of the new age Riojas can be a bit jammy for me. When I think of Traditional Rioja, I think of the mushroom, the developmental flavors, a little bit of sweet wood, not so fruity, have some nice complexities to them. This is the most complex wine out of the bunch so far. Oh, Ooh, we, might have, we might come close here because the nose is really exciting. Mushroom, uh, tobacco, a little bit of mocha, black cherry, mud. <laughs> Actually, like, literally smells like mud. You know, I, I'm a, my dad's a farmer. Sometimes you work in the fields when it gets a little bit wet outside. It literally does smell like mud. Oh, 92 points Venice. Antonio Galoni's website. Venice is my favorite critic website out of all of them. This keeps changing as new and new flavors start to come out, which is the sign of greatness, complexity. Hold on, hold on. This is really, really as close as it gets out of the three. I think the team that was coming close. I think the Jimenez de Pathina is really on the cusp. There's so much complexity on the palate. There's intensity on the back end. There's a little bit of length. You know, on this challenge, I didn't think that it would come close, but this this wine is getting there. It's coming close. I guess it's got a little bit of bottle age, too. You got to like a little bit of age notes in your wine. Not everybody likes that. Excellent wine. Super highly, highly recommend. 
Is it the path of like great, 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 great Ryan Watch movie? It's coming close. It's right on the borderline there. It's, it's straddling the edge. I think this is the best buy of the. The team that came close, the more going, this kind of disappointed me a little bit. Still very good wine. I really recommend all these, but this was also the cheapest. I think the real lesson here is you can just find outstanding wines under 20 bucks. You just have to fight hard, know what you're looking for, utilize your local shop owner, talk to them. They have knowledge. They're passionate about this stuff. They'll guide you in the right direction. So I'd love to know, what are your great gems that you found under 20, 25 bucks? You want to share any? I'd love to hear in the comments below. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon.